Hello guys, hello people, welcome back to this wonderful platform, MC Potoski Talk Show, yeah, on YouTube. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, according to your time. Zoom, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are welcome back to this great platform, where we react to all videos that comes our way and bring you guys latest happenings around the world, Nigeria in general. If you're first on this great platform, please consider to subscribe and put on the bell ladies and gentlemen i bring you guys the latest happening today so i'm going to leave the video to play so that you guys will still watch the video and also drop your comments at the comment section what you think about this video and you don't have to be scared because everybody is entitled to, to his or our opinion so just watch the video and I will be right back. In 2014, for the presidency of Nigeria, he told Nigerians that he would lead from the front. He had three cardinal programs. Better economy, leading from the front to deal a death blow on insecurity, and then to conquer corruption, at least reduce it maximally, even if not totally destroyed. With all respect, and records are there, statistics are there, Mr. President has failed abysmally on all three counts. Today, we are discussing insecurity. In 2014, 2015, Yes, there was insecurity in Borono State, in Northeast, particularly Borono State, which was why on the 18th to 19th of April 2014, I remember I was then at the National Conference with 492 other distinguished Nigerians from all strata of life, National Conference, whose over 600 recommendations have never been touched with a torn foot pole by this government. We were at the conference when it was announced that about 276 girls had been abducted from a secondary school in Chibok, in Barono State. Of these 276, only about 126 or 126 or there about 116 have been got him back. The others, till tomorrow, nobody knows where they are. But there was security so much that the presidential elections could hold in Borno State. And Mr. President was said to have won there resoundingly. But ask any person who comes from Borno State, they will tell you that you should forget about this government propaganda in newspapers, social media, and the orthodox media, that there is security. That many of the areas have actually been taken over and occupied by Boko Haram insurgents, including places like Niger State, Kaduna, Benue, Plateau State, all over the country. That was why... Dapchi, another secondary school in Yobe State, over 116 girls were abducted. Of them, about 110 were, were, were reclaimed. Six are still missing, including that beautiful daughter of ours, of Nigeria, Shariba, I mean, Shaibu. Leah Sharibo. Say tomorrow she has not been delivered. Sharibo, say tomorrow has not been delivered. They said because she refused to recant her faith in Christianity. We were here before this new one. The new one is. Um, um, before this one, there was Kagara, I think Kagara, 
in Casina State, about 300. All of them, firm. Well, the Chief, Chief Jose Come, they Chief. were all gotten back. Chief we were Jose Come, huge sums of money, running to billions. Chief Jose Come, if you could just the tomorrow told us how. Chief Jose Come, if you could just this, hold your thoughts. Chief Jose Come, if you could just hold your thoughts on that note. We'll take a short break now. We'll take uh, a commercial break, and then we'll come back uh, to take your comments. Welcome back to This is a Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still Senior Advocate of Nigeria, uh, Dr. Mike Ozekome, S-A-N, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, the Akpakba Vigi Vigi of the Edo Kingdom. Uh, Dr. Ozekome, thank you for staying with us. Uh, you are still commenting on the thank security situation in the country and the abduction of uh, boarding students. Uh, across the country, particularly in the northern part of Nigeria. If you may just go ahead. Yes, I was saying it was in Kankara, Kansina State, that about 300 students were abducted. And within 48 to um, maybe within 36 to 48 hours, the students were gotten back, who were told that huge sums of money were paid as ransom. But the government, as opaque as ever, without transparency and accountability, would never let Nigerians know how much was paid and if indeed ransom was paid. After Kankara, we now have this Kagara, where 27 students were abducted from their school including eight members of staff and about, I mean, and their families. So if you add all of them up till now, you will see that about 721 people, students, have so far been abducted in the last six years, with many of them never seen. Where are the Chibok girls? Are they married out? Are they still alive? Are they now women? That is those who have not been found. These are children of family who are still grieving. So it is therefore clear that whereas it was only Boko Haram that was mostly the problem by 2014, today the problems have since escalated geometrically, not arithmetically, from Boko Haram to deadly, murderous headsmen, to vampirous kidnappers, to dangerous armed bandits, to armed robbers, everywhere in Nigeria is suddenly becoming unsafe. The air is not even safe. We just heard that a police aircraft just crashed near Abuja Airport. If you don't die in the air, you die because the government does not even have the equipment, necessary equipment. Vaccine is still a far cry from us. We Americans is vaccinating over 2 million people per day. If we don't die from COVID-19, here's men we kill us, our wives, our family, our mothers, our daughters, and rape them in our farms and at times in our homes. If we escape that, armed bandits we will lay us in our homes. If we escape that, dangerous kidnappers will abduct us along the highways. So Nigeria has become a very, very unsafe haven. And this is very sad. This is quite sad because the core areas of Mr. President, he has not delivered on any of them at all. Well, Dr. Is Zekoma. it economy? It is, yes. If I may come in here, okay, I mean, I get the point you are trying to make, uh, but I mentioned that the former uh, chief of uh, army staff, uh, Lieutenant General Tuko Buratai, said, look, this is not something that the state alone can handle. Uh, this is not something that the military alone can address, and that it may take us 20 years 
before we can solve this problem, and that the people themselves have a role to play. The uh, Minister of Defense, uh, General uh, Magashi, has also been quoted as uh, saying that people should stop being cowardly, uh, that they should defend themselves. Uh, that's one solution that has been offered. The uh, National Security Advisor uh, has also been quoted as saying uh, that, uh, look, the best approach is whole of society approach, whole of government approach, which means that we can't keep blaming government. All of us are part of this uh, solution, and we must each play our part. What do you think? Yeah, that is why we have been clamoring, I particularly, in the 2005 National Political Conference, in the Vision 2009 Conference, and in the 2014 National Conference, all of which I was a member. I have clamored again and again that we must have state police. We must also have community policing. We must have not just the federal government police force set up in sessions 214, 215, and 216 of the 1999 Constitution. But that like you have in America, where you have the FBI, the CIA, the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police, the New York Police Department, the Los Angeles Police Department, then you have state police, then you have um, um, local government police, what they call county council, even tertiary institutions have their own police force. The result is that there is a synergy between all of them to tackle insecurity. That is why I believe that we must have not just the federal police at the, at the top, we must have state police, we must have local government police at the, the, uh, the, the 374 local government areas in, in um, I mean, I mean uh, 774 local government areas in Nigeria. And we must have um, lo, um, what you call community policing. That is what Nigerians have started doing. For example, in the southwest, you have Amoteko, which literally means leopard. In the southeast, you now have Eastern Nigeria Network. And many of them across Nigeria. This is because I want to agree with them that the government not only cannot provide security, but has abysmally failed to provide security. Look, it's section 14 of the Constitution. The primary purpose of government is to provide security and welfare for the citizens. But where a government rigs its hands and washes its hands like Pontius Pilate will or did over the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then there is a problem. I do agree that the community themselves should join. But that is no license. That is no guarantee. That is no advocacy that government should abdicate its own duty. Did you not see one position, one, one video going viral where one sheikh was negotiating with Boko Haram insurgents, giving their bundles of money, whilst Nigerian soldiers were drinking gari, soaked gari with palm kernel? Is that how to fight the war? What of all the trillions of Naira popped pumped into this insurgency since 2015. Where has the money gone down to? So if the government simply just says the people should now take up arms, they are kind of, a government itself is not recommending that the people should take up arms. For God's sake, then give everybody arms. Like the Igbos we tell Chief Emeka Odume Gojuku when there was, was program, <coughs> excuse me, against them in the north. They said, Ojuku, give us guns. So give Nigerians, all Nigerians, guns. So that every Nigerian will know he's licensed to carry a gun. When power means power. When force they will be equal and balanced. But when you have one group carrying AK rifles, for example, terrorizing innocent people, unarmed people, driving them out of their farms wow. and their farm produce, be eaten up by cows, well, and cows Dr. are Mike. being valued more than human beings, then there's a problem. Well, Dr. Ozekome, on, on that note, there is a problem. Many Nigerians will agree with you. 
We'll take a short break. When we return, I would like to ask you, some people have been saying there is need to declare a state of emergency in Niger State and some other states of the Federation and what your opinion is in that regard. We'll be right back. You're still watching This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. Welcome back to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zekome S.A.N., the Akbava Vigivigi of uh, Edo Kingdom. Well, uh, Dr. Zekome, thank you for staying with us. I, I, I was told you had an up Nepal situation at your end. But I'd asked you, does the president of Nigeria, under the constitution, have unilateral powers of declaring a state of emergency, either in Niger State or elsewhere, as has, as has been advocated by some members of the National Assembly? No, he cannot. He, under Section 305 of the Constitution, he must go to the Senate to give him powers to declare a state of emergency. And even when he's given such powers for a limited period of time, which must be stated, and the reasons must be given, even then, he does not have the power, for example, to remove a governor as a former president once did to, governor, uh, to, to governors of Ekiti State and Plateau State. That was highly unconstitutional. And don't forget that it was a state of emergency declaration that, it, that brought about the crisis in the Western region, which finally dovetailed into the, uh, the coup that came in, on, the, on, the, on the 15th of January, 1966, by Major Kaduna Uzogu Chukuma and other young military officers. So he cannot unilaterally do that. But then, in declaring a state of emergency, we must look at the imperatives. Is it necessary? Is it not necessary? I think we have even gone more than declaring a state of emergency. I was kidnapped on the 22nd of August. 2013. I was released by my kidnappers on the 12th of September 2013, and I came out with seven blueprints for the government. Three of them were that the government emergency on ECT, the government should declare a state of emergency on infrastructural decay. That was two and that the government should declare a state of emergency on youth unemployment. There were three of the key seven demands I made of the government after seeing death, and I was delivered by God, woken up from the dead like Lazarus by Jesus Christ. Did the government listen to me? Some say, oh, he is saying not because he, he was suffering from what you call the Stockholm Syndrome. A syndrome where you begin to empathize with your with your with your terror with your, your people who are terrorizing you. I said no. It was based on what I saw, what I had, what I saw, what I witnessed, that these things must be done. That was about eight years ago. So what I saw eight years ago, like Nostradamus, the man who saw tomorrow, is what they are finally saying eight years later. Because we have been sleeping, or at best, walking somnambulistically. What Ayikwe Ama in his epic, the beautiful ones are not yet born, we call the living dead or the walking corpses. This government must wake up to its responsibility. It must know that the people voted for it to take care of their welfare and provide security for them and give the democracy dividends, not to complain. So when I hear government officials still complaining about past government, the Jonathan government, and other past government, Yara Adwa or Basanjo, I, I not only laugh, I go for. You were elected into office not to do damage assessment, but to contribute your own quota and move Nigeria forward. Didn't you see what uh, Obama did? After he took over from George Bush Jr., he went full scale, brought Obamacare, and started healing America. Have you not seen what Joe Biden 
is already doing. Within three days of his coming into office, he rolled out 30 executive orders meant to realign and rearrange and restructure and re-engineer America, which have been so degraded, so downgraded, so humiliated <coughs> by President Trump well, Dr. in Dr. four Zekoma. years of, 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 of narcissism. Thank you for watching that video. We appreciate. And this is where I'll be leaving you guys. But if this is your first time on this great channel, please do it to subscribe and put on your notification bell so that whenever we upload any video for this great channel, you will be the first person to see the video. So guys, see you guys some other time.